Hi, my name is Jake Spicer, and welcome to the third video in our five part series. You'll find links to the other videos down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at shapes of light and dark in our subject, taking the face as our point of focus. Let's get started. We're going to keep materials simple today. You'll just need a pencil, sharpener, eraser, and some paper to draw on. I'm going to be working from this photograph of my friend Inej, and you could apply the same principles to a live subject or a photo yourself. Today we'll be using drawing to explore tonal shapes. When we're looking for tone, we have to imagine that the hues of a subject have been completely desaturated, leaving only the values of light and dark behind. To make this video simpler, I've desaturated the photograph I'm working from to make sure that I'm not being distracted by other aspects of colour, and you could try the same yourself. In the last video, we looked at how negative spaces can help us to see our positive subjects more clearly. Although negative space surrounds the head, its application is more limited than in a subject like hands, so we're going to stay focused on the shapes within the subject. This week, looking at the shapes of differing tonal values that make up the face. If we posterize the photo of Inej, we can start to group the shapes we see into the darker tones that define the features, the hair and the deeper shadows, the mid-tones of the shadows cast on skin and the shirt collar, the lighter tones that make up the majority of the skin, and the lightest tones which define the illuminated portions of the face and shirt. The jigsaw puzzle of tonal shapes all fit together to make the face as we see it, from our current angle and under these particular conditions of light. In today's exercise, we're going to explore them one at a time, making a linear map of those tonal shapes without trying to represent the tonal values themselves. The edges of those tonal shapes are particularly important. Sometimes it will be difficult to tell where one area of tonal value stops and another starts, like at the edge of the skin around the nostril, where one grey merges into another. At other times, an edge of tone might be easier to recognise, like the edge around the inside of the hole of the nostril. The weight and clarity of your line should reflect the confidence of your observation, with a firmer mark suggesting a definite edge and a more exploratory line feeling around the subtle limit of a highlight or a gentle transition between tones. So let's launch into a drawing. This process is all about mapping the shapes of light and dark that you see in the face. You don't need to know anything about how to draw a face to make the exercise work. In fact, you should forget everything that you do know so that you're just looking from one jigsaw puzzle piece to another, trying to recognise the particular character of each shape and fit it next to the corresponding shape in the drawing. It's a good habit to establish some big limits first. Top, bottom, left and right limits of the head, followed by the most obvious shapes of dark. Work in simple rough lines as if you were hewing the head from a block of marble, cutting out the rough shape in simple confident strokes before going over with another pass to refine what you've already established. Lightly erase the first stage of the drawing, leaving its ghost behind to guide your next marks, then start from a clear shape and pass through the face again, employing finer marks to record more focused observations. In this second pass, pay close attention to the specific character of shapes and be rigorous in your observation of the spaces between the more eye-catching features. Forget that an eye is an eye or a nose a nose and notice the specific shapes of the white of the eye between eyelash and iris or the dark jelly bean-like shape of the nostril, the soft-edged triangle on the right cheek. By focusing on the shapes themselves and forgetting about the features that they represent, you'll be able to free yourself from the assumption of what you think the shape looks like, opening your observational process up to the face that is in front of you rather than the generic face that exists in your mind. Always trust your eye. If a shape surprises you, don't fall into the trap of adjusting it into something more plausible as you'll invariably knock all of the following shapes out of kilter. Once you've passed through the face for a second time, it's often worth sitting back, having a cup of tea and taking a break away from the drawing before coming back with an eraser and a fresh pair of eyes. Now you can start to pin the shapes down for good. Work through your drawing one shape after another, flicking your eyes back and forth between what you've already drawn and the subject you're drawing from. Treat it as a spot the difference. Look at the shape in the subject, then look at the corresponding shape in your drawing. If they don't match, alter the drawing. Press harder for a hard, certain edge, and let your pencil play more gently over soft edges and gradients. 
don't aim to make the drawing a perfect illusion of the model. Instead, let it facilitate your exploration of the face. Your mark should record all of the ambiguity and uncertainty of your eye's journey, seeking to record what you see precisely, but accepting that to do so perfectly is impossible. This drawing is going to serve as the base for one of the exercises in our next video, where we'll use the graphite grey from the Shade and Tone Mixed Media set to add tonal values to the map of shapes, but it could remain an end in itself, or it could be the framework for further tonal explorations. One little thing to note is that the edges you're looking at are tonal edges, boundaries between areas of contrasting light and dark. Sometimes they're hard edges, sometimes soft, but they relate to the subject as you see it. Last week we explored contour, which is subtly different. It's a physical edge which we know to be there even when we can't always see it. Many drawings record both tonal shapes and contours, but it's worth noticing that they're different and that this drawing focuses on the former. And there we go. This A4 drawing took about an hour to get to this stage. Like all of our exercises here, it's a training tool to help you see shapes of tone. The same process could be applied to pretty much any subject, especially those lit by clear directional lighting. It doesn't have to be a portrait. In our next video, we're going to be building on today's lesson, adding a little bit of colour using the shade and tone pan set. If you share any of these drawings on social media, do tag me and Derwent in any posts you put up. It's always really lovely for us to see your work. See you next week.